The building reopened in 1999. It sat dormant for 10 years, completely decaying. Ceilings collapsing, water everywhere, birds, trash. And then they saved it. When you looked at this iconic building at Union Station being 100 years old, it really is on the forefront of Kansas City. It's at its front door. It's considered Kansas City's living room, and it's really Kansas City's palace. And so we had to figure out how to tell the stories of the people that saved this building, that made it a living, breathing part of our community. And what in today's technology could make that happen? We wanted to tell the hundred years of Union Station on Union Station. When doing architectural mappings, that's when it all comes together. It's basically the 21st century's mode of transforming environments. You know, I would say if Da Vinci was alive today, he'd be working in my or 3D Studio Max. We were very fortunate over the past several years to work with Quixotic, and they were a performing arts organization. They brought life and music together in a wonderful storytelling. The way this group started was in old abandoned warehouses. We were a collective of friends, really, that just kind of came together and we'd take over these spaces and create these immersive experiences. And that's really how we kind of started out. And then it kind of turned into more of a formal company. We like to say that we create experiences versus performance. It's, you know, whatever um, comes our way, we try to take it as a custom project and really tell the story or create the experience for the um, attendee. What are some cool ways you think we could uh, integrate some of the, like these 3D moments we're talking about with the, with the building's architecture and stuff like that? What well, I, like that. I really like the idea there. of an x-ray vision so people mm -hmm. can see inside of that and have people walking around as if they were taken back in time. Trying to go through so much information and pinpointing what elements we wanted to pick out and then how do we take all those things and have the arc of a story. It was yeah, just a lot of information to process and to go through. The biggest challenges for this type of medium are people expect and want to see fun things happen to a, a building. When telling a story, you can't just make a documentary and put it up on the building. That's the real challenge, is to take the story telling experience and to merge it with the art of projection mapping and to be able to pull it off in some way. Really what we need to do here is we need to entertain and educate at the same time and keep people engaged and excited but also by the end of it they you know learn about the history. I mean we have this 10-story tall building as our canvas to do that. There's a lot that goes into um, setup on projection mapping jobs. This one was a little bit different because we were using 12 different projectors from six different angles. Uh, they're stacked on top of each other, so they're overlapping. So our grid was three by two. Uh, there also had to be some overlap between the projectors for bleed. So this is really critical um, to take care of before we got started with the project. So we would know kind of how to lay out the building and if there was gonna be any lens distortion uh, and also just a quick uh, Google Maps top-down view that would show where the projectors would be uh, laid out on the ground and the distance from the building as well. 
the very beginning, so we just have folders upon folders of multiple images. There's literally thousands of these that we poured through. We were very worried about how these old low resolution images would look blown up 60 feet on this huge building. And there's really no way to test to see how it's actually going to look because the only test we get to do is the night before the show. So instead of trying to get all the resolution we could out of these old images, we actually went in and made everything look worse on purpose. Adding things in like grain and little film artifacts and things like that to try to sort of set these images in their time rather than make them look better. Once we have all those sources, we start at the very beginning and just using text and descriptive, we put just a facsimile of the station behind it. We start laying in the history from the very beginning to get all the key points within our eight and a half minutes. We knew all along that this was going to be more than a slideshow. This is using every technique we know to make it a living history and make it exciting. Each section, there were about nine different sections, they were all broken up to in their own After Effects comps. That way, everybody could be working on this at the same time. And each section was composited in After Effects, and then once those sections were rendered out, we brought them back into After Effects and to a master comp. This is the original blueprint of the station, and we actually we model the station in 3D, you know, from scratch. And so we use these blueprints to do that. Knowing that we have pretty much the exact replica of the station, we are free to create knowing that when we get to the technical mapping aspect of it, it would all line up to the actual station and complete the experience. It needs to be a Broadway show. You gotta make them feel sad, and then you gotta bring it back up, and then you have to do it on the crescendo. Music was vitally important. So once we found all these magnificent pictures, to give them an opportunity for people to understand what the building meant to them, you had to tie the right music in with the right emotions. And that took us many, many nights to really get the creative piece of that happening. I think I called you up one day and said, yeah, hey, yeah. man, I got this, uh, yeah, this was... pretty intense project that we're going to try to pull off. And I said, sounds fantastic. I've always wanted to work with Quixotic and, you know, Union Station, 100 years. I mean, it's a, it's a big deal and in Kansas City. And uh, I sit right across. I mean, Union Station is literally out. I look out my window here, and I, um, I watch the trains go by, and I see the Union Station. So I thought, well, I'll just uh, take the, the orchestra and see if I can't create the sounds of Union Station, the sound of, a, of trains going by with just the orchestra alone. You know, some of it's sound design, but some of it is uh, actually part of the score. You might confuse the two. It's uh, Right. From my perspective, I wanted to uh, do as much as I could using the orchestra and the music. We start to use more uh, synthesizers and more modern sounding instruments as we go further in time into the 70s and 80s. The city forgot about, you know, Union Station for a while. And uh, so here's this, just for musically, we're like, okay, we're gonna start again here. The synthesizers, as you point out, come in and um, 
start to reflect not only the you know a new era but a new era in music as well. You're trying to convey a lot of different things at the same time. I mean, there's yeah. a lot packed into a hundred years here. We sent our first drafts back. They're like, okay, well, we want, uh, you know, More. basically a three minute quote. Was it three minutes? I think yeah. something like that. Three minute section that just builds to the end. So we did, you know, our first pass, and uh, we sent it off. And they're like, oh, okay, that's good. Can we make it bigger? And then uh, we're like, okay. So we we like made a second pass. And we made it bigger. And they're like, well, can you make it even bigger? Hitting the keyboard like dun 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 yeah. dun 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 dun. Everything's just happening all at once now. There was so much going on in this. We really left a lot of the sound design out, uh, you know, just not, yeah, there's so not much. Not to compete. This whole thing was just so inspiring to uh, compose to and never, you know, a dull moment. Seeing it projected on Union Station, overwhelmingly, there was a feeling of just being proud. There weren't many stories told with the technique. It was really just all flash and fireworks, and we thought this is you know, a wonderful opportunity to truly tell a story. I mean, they could have just done a firework display. They could have just done something more traditional, but I think it's really great that they wanted to do something you know, a little bit different. At that point, we had watched it thousands and thousands and thousands of times. So for me, it was more interesting to turn around and look at the audience and see how people were reacting to different moments within the piece and you know, what you know, made people talk and to have that connection with the audience. Just sitting back with 10,000 people watching that on the lawn of Union Station, it was a really cool cool thing. It was a moment in time and I stood out there and just sat all the way up on the very back of the hill and looked at the building and looked at the story and said, the team created a masterpiece. They brought the story of the lives of thousands and thousands of people to life for one reason only to remember and honor their memory. So we're pretty lucky and they're pretty special.